Have you ever called someone's baby ugly? Of course you haven't. You're a decent person. But what if the baby really was ugly? Well, that's what I did. And even though I'm not a good person, making a video about a terrible high school field in the middle of nowhere ended up with me discovering an incredible story of triumph in small town America. And one that changed my life and hopefully changes yours too. Spoiler alert, the baby grows up into something unbelievably beautiful. This is the story about the worst high school football field in America. And it's coming up right after this. Sorry, but in order to pull this video off, I had to get a sponsor. Look, for me, I typically don't have stress in life until it comes to picking out an outfit. I'm generally not that fashionable, but thanks to Mack Weldon, that problem is now solved. Mack Weldon has an entire system designed around clothes rooted in smart design, made with performance fabrics, and most importantly, built to work together. The daily wear system makes it easy to dress for work, leisure, or play, or wherever life takes you. If you're gonna sit on the couch on Sundays and watch football, check out their Ace sweatshorts and ultra soft Pima tees. Look at this gear I copped. I especially like the swim trunks that have a pocket designed just for your cell phone. I wore them at the beach and hey, I looked great. And their ultra soft underwear fit amazing and provide me with all day comfort. So after this video, head on over to MacWeldon.com forward slash five points. And before summer ends, cop the daily wear system and enter promo code five points and get 20% off your first order. Again, that's MacWeldon.com forward slash five points. Use promo code five points and get 20% off your order. Thanks to Mac Weldon for sponsoring this video and supporting this channel. This is the town of Branson, located in Southeast Colorado near the New Mexico border. It isn't much to look at. Boasting a population of 57 in the 2020 census, Branson got its name in 1918 after Josiah F. Branson, who put the town on his own land. This little place is located about three and a half hours from Denver. The closest gas station is an hour away. And coming out here, it was hard for me to understand why Branson is here in the first place. According to Wikipedia, Branson is on a minor branch of the Santa Fe Trail, and a railroad switch is nearby, prompting a depot to be built. In its early years, many attempted farming despite the inhospitable conditions, and the town peaked in the 20s with a population of over a thousand. Drought hit, and in true Dust Bowl fashion, many left Branson, and it turned into ranching country. That's not the first time Branson has been down. Not by a long shot. Football didn't exist in Branson before 2016, and it kind of made sense that it didn't. Though land in the area is abundant and somewhat flat, the idea of having a football field in tiny Branson was a far off vision. But in 2016, football was brought to the town by school employee Brad Doherty, who sought to give the town a little bit of hope in the form of athletics. Brad, a local pastor, had a vision to have a few home football games adjacent to his tiny school and to give his sons, who both play football for Branson, a chance at that all-American experience. They asked our superintendent at the time, hey, can we start football? And he said, yes, we'll make that happen. And he did, we took that, um, he brought in several uh, tons and, and by several, I mean like 50 or 60 tons of topsoil trying to get it growing and seeded it and irrigated it. Um, but just our, our soil here is not very conducive to growing yeah. things and we don't have a lot of water. To say things started rough is an understatement. Unfortunately, playing football on a makeshift field in a cow pasture wasn't such a great idea. Filled with snake holes, gopher holes, and actual cacti, the Branson football field was an injury waiting to happen. You've heard of the turf monster? Well, this field had actual wildlife ready to chow down on unsuspecting players. After four years of very rough football on the makeshift field, Branson's opponents had enough and refused to play in the tiny town. Brad and the school were shocked and hurt by this, but reality started to set in. The field just wasn't good. It was December of 2020 and the future of football in Branson looked bleak. The town doesn't have much water, so a natural grass field would require more water to maintain than the entire town itself needs. What about a turf field? In Branson, sure, if you have $450,000 lying around, 
Spoiler alert, that kind of money isn't available in most large school districts. Fixing the existing field was unrealistic. A new turf field would cost too much, and nobody wanted to play in Branson. It looked like the dream was dead. But almost immediately, the town began scrambling for resources. Instead of giving up, the town got up. They knew it would be a long, hard-fought battle to keep football. But like any long journey, it started with a single step. And YouTube? Brad Doherty had an idea. Let's make a video. He pulled some kids out of class, spent an afternoon around the school, taught himself how to edit a video, and like many greats before him, hit upload on YouTube. Coupled with this effort, Brad got on the phone and called some local news outlets, trying to drum up some attention for this underdog in the middle of nowhere. You know what? Let's just tell the story. Let's make a quick two minute video, see if we can catch in on some holiday generosity and let's make something funny because it still is a great story to tell um, and we can tell it in a fun way. So I wrote a script, um, asked the teachers if I could have those senior boys and all those kids out of class. I think we did it on the last day before Christmas break or maybe two days before. So we took a whole day with those seniors and shot around town, uh, around school. We pulled out the other groups for their sections um, and it was just a really fun thing got everybody involved even a man of faith like brad thought it might take years to raise the money and he would have to be patient however almost instantly it worked once local news outlets picked up the story donations started pouring in then it went national the phrase worst high school field in america was used by a branson employee and it made its way to a USA Today article. And that phrase started to rank on Google. Their makeshift video went viral, and the media came to town. In less than four months, Branson had raised $500,000. This wasn't a Hail Mary, it was a drive right down the middle of the field. Money came from all over the world, even from viewers of this channel. A town of 57, who months before was told by opponents that their field was dangerous would now be getting a new one. However, just raising the money might have been the easiest part. Let's not forget something very important here. The field Branson was replacing was really, really bad. Like I said, it was an ugly baby. One of the main problems Rocky Mountain Turf Solutions, the company that installed the field encountered, was how unlevel Branson's original field was. The, the field, when we showed up, it was just a kind of a sticker patch. And we had to come in and, and start out by squaring the field up and actually finding out uh, where the actual corners should be because they were off. And um, from there, we, we got our big equipment out and we started cutting the field, started cutting grade on it. Uh. During construction, it was an unusually wet spring. So in a town that severely lacked water, rain interrupted the construction of its dream field many times. This was a tough project for a lot of reasons. We were so far away from all of the materials needed to build the field, um, as well as uh, there's no, there was no hotels around. Workers had to rent two houses in town, and some days they ate lunch with the students. It really was a team effort. The story doesn't just end with the field being built. There are many stories within that. A local man, Carlos Duran, came to the field looking for work. He was hired full time to help out during the project. His stepson, Fernando Gonzalez, a student and a player on the team, helped out too. He's been offered a position with the company when he graduates. The entire town and beyond pitched into building the field. Brad watched the progress from his office, day after day until finally, the last piece of turf was laid. It was my baby, and I'm also the tech guy for our school, and we have uh, video security cameras everywhere, so I made sure that one, camera was pointed directly out there so I could bring it up on a screen at my office just to see what was happening at any moment of the day and I, I loved watching it they were a great company to work with um, but it was always fascinating you know what it would go from oh they're they got the tractors out and they're clearing off the dirt and, oh they're bringing in the next level of gravel oh they're doing this and, oh my goodness the turf actually got delivered today this was no ordinary field technically it's amazing and the town couldn't wait to share it with the entire world
20 years after a devastating tragedy that befell our nation, a tiny town in Colorado went out to show everyone not just what this town is about, but also what this country is all about. Just looking at the field, it almost looks like it doesn't belong. A perfect oasis of football in the middle of a vast open field. I initially felt like I didn't belong as me, the tiny YouTuber, began to notice all the major media outlets starting to pull up. Those fears quickly subsided as Brad's wife greeted me in the parking lot and asked me if I was the YouTube people. Yeah, that's Brandon Perna with me, by the way. He drove the three and a half hours, so thanks to him. Everyone in the town was as amazing as the field looks and about the field. It's actually incredibly high quality. In fact, it's of higher quality than some NFL fields. Yeah, this is, this is a, a product called 3D3 Root Zone. It's a 52 ounce product and, and it, um, off of the test, this, this particular turf is, will, will uh, there's a lot of injuries on synthetic turf. There was a, uh, a field in the NFL that, that a lot of the players won't, don't want to play on because of the injuries. This particular turf uh, has a, a record of 35% less lower extremity injuries. After an opening ceremony, a dedication, and a coin toss, it was time to play football. The Branson slash Kim Bearcats are led by head coach Adam Lucero, and there's no question, this team is all business. Quarterbacked by Brad Doherty's son, the team got out to a big lead and held on to it. I was impressed that there were many athletes on both sides of the ball. Their opponent from Deer Trail had talent too, and it showed with some good 6v6 football. In the end, Branson won their home opener 72-14, bringing their record to 3-0. Their goal is a state championship, and it's not unrealistic. How many good vibes do you need out of one little town? I guess not enough is the answer. As the sun set on a perfect day in Colorado, the story of a tiny town with a terrible field seemed to be coming to an end. I ended up out there because I called their baby ugly, and from the video I made, you all helped with many donations, prompting Brad to email me and ask me if I'd like to travel halfway across the country to their home opener. I'd come to see that baby that I had called ugly grew up to be something beautiful, something uniquely American, and a story that has stayed with me. I hope it stays with you too. Before I leave, the field may be built, but it can be taken even further. Branson still needs bleachers, and for their ultimate goal, they would love to install lights and hold playoff and district championships there. It would be a fitting cherry on top to an already great story. If you build it, they will come. So if you follow the link below and donate, they surely will build it. And I just use that church service to reflect on the different lessons that I'd learned through this whole process um, that the Lord had shown me. And it was during the closing prayer that uh, I was just brought to tears thinking about how beautiful it was that everybody um, came together and all the amazing things that happened to let it just roll. And we just I was sobbing in front of in front of my little congregation, probably about 40, 50 people there. And it finally hit me. People ask, hey, when's it going to hit you? And I didn't think that would be the time. Um, but it's been it's been amazing and it keeps being amazing. Um, you know, as we continue to tell the story, as we continue to, to make it something that's more than just football, but something for our whole community. Thank you so much for watching this. I'm Five Points Vids and you made it to my next video.